Richard Phillips was the first owner of Klein between 1790 and 1800. In 1790, Richard Phillips was the younger son of a Carmarthenshire land-owning family and he came to Swansea seeking his fortune through the exploitation of mineral wealth of the area. Phillips bought 27 acres of land between Mumbles and Swansea, choosing a site for his new house on a slight rise, protected by woods and with a view of the sea. He built a two-storey castellated mansion in local sandstone and called the property Woodlands. Richard Phillips took an active interest in the development of his adopted town. As a trustee of the Swansea Harbour Trust, he was closely involved in the building of the first Mumbles Lighthouse. He died in 1798 and his nephew James Phillips died the following year. And as a result of this, the house and the estate were made available for sale. George Ward, owner of the house between 1800 to 1830. George Ward was born in Kent and came to Wales after retiring from an undistinguished army career. In 1800, he bought mining interests on the east bank of the Lacher estuary. He bought woodlands in the same year for £1,800, bringing his wife and family to live in the small house. He also involved himself in local affairs. Because of his interest in a mill near the pottery on the Towie, he opposed the building of a floating harbour which delayed the development of the docks area for a generation. He was promoted to Major General in 1805, even though he had retired a number of years earlier. His rank and army training enabled him to become inspecting field officer of the local yeomanry. He used what he now called Woodlands Castle as a yeomanry headquarters. Ward had the original house extended and remodelled to a gothic style, firstly in 1800 and again more extensively from 1817. It is known that a garden was laid out in 1805 to the north of the castle. During his 30 years at Woodlands Castle, Ward increased the estate to over 330 acres, including land near the house and in Mumbles. However, his income did not keep pace with his expenditure, and when he died in 1813, the house was mortgaged. His eldest son, George, was forced to put the estate up for sale. The estate was bought by Benjamin Hall of Lanover in Monmouthshire for £8,000. Benjamin bought the estate on behalf of his sister Charlotte, who was an heiress in her own right. In 1827, Charlotte married Jenkins Davis Barrington of Swansea and Woodlands Castle became their home. The house was too big for their needs and expensive to run. As a result, 16 rooms were demolished from the north wing. They also sold some of the properties in Blackpill and along the Turnpike Road to Mumbles. The Barrington family, including their son Arthur, moved to Monmouthshire in 1857 to be nearer the now ennobled Lord Lanover and his eccentric wife Augusta. It was intended that Arthur should become the heir to Lord and Lady Lanover, but irreconcilable differences between them prevented that. In 1859, William Graham Vivian of Singleton Abbey started negotiations to purchase the Woodland estate. The connection with the Vivian family would last almost a hundred years. William Graham Vivian, born in 1827, was the second son of John Henry Vivian and Sarah Jones. He lived in Singleton Abbey until, five years after his father's death, he bought Woodlands Castle from the Barrington family in 1859. He was said to be a quiet man, but typical of his class, he stopped an increase in wages for his workers, but amassed great personal wealth for himself. He was concerned for the protection of the countryside from urban expansion. He spent time and a lot of money on woodlands to show how wealthy he was. Three important trees planted by him can be seen in front of the castle one Wellingtonia and two Monterey Cypress, one of which is one of the tallest recorded in Britain. The house was made into a mansion with 50 rooms. He bought tapestries and furnishings from Europe. 
Both his parents were interested in plants and horticulture. Within 20 years of his arrival at Klein, the Swansea Town Guide was able to describe the sheltered grounds as genial, as could be found at Malaga or Marseille. Vivian was able to take advantage of the site and the soil conditions to grow exotic shrubs and trees. It is known that good specimens of camellia and eucalyptus grew on the upper slopes. Rhododendrons discovered in the Himalayas were planted in the valley leading to the sea. He opened the grounds to the public once a year. The estate became known as Klein Castle. Vivian increased his land owning from around 100 acres to more than 1500 acres spread around Black Pearl, Mumbles and parts of Gower. He was childless and unmarried but made detailed plans to keep the estate within the family. On his death in 1912, he arranged his unmarried sister to be the next owner and for the inheritance to pass, after her days, to his nephew, Algernon. The estate was valued at the time at £1 million, according to the Index of Wills and Administration. Dulcie Charlotte Vivian owned Klein between 1912 to 1921, born in 1839 in St James Square, London. She never married and spent her time doing charitable and philanthropic work, particularly in Black Pill and Gower. Her home at Park La Breos, Penn Mine, became a hospital to treat the wounded during the First World War and was later transferred at an advantageous rate to the local hospital board. Moving between London and Gower, she would spend time at Klein each spring, but she made no changes to the house or garden. Miss Vivian funded the Village Institute in Black Pill, now known as Vivian Hall, next door to the school. She died in London at the age of 82, and like her brother, is buried at Klein Chapel. Admiral Algernon Walker Hennage Vivian, house owner between 1921 to 1952. Algernon Walker Hennage Vivian, or the Admiral as he was more commonly known, was the third son of Henrietta Vivian and Major Clement Walker Hennage of Compton Bassett in Wilshire. Not expecting to inherit anything of his father's estate, he joined the Royal Navy as a midshipman in 1886, rising to the rank of Admiral in 1927. He served in the Pacific, the Boer War in South Africa and Gallipoli in the First World War. He took part in a secret mission in 1915 to bring from South Africa 84 tons of gold bullion to finance the war effort. It was valued at the time at 17 million pounds. He had the greatest influence on the gardens as we see them today. He sponsored plant collecting expeditions overseas and many of Klein's rhododendrons still bear the original collector's numbers. The Admiral's influence can also be seen in the landscaping, which includes a Japanese bridge, the Admiral's Tower and the gazebo. The oak woodland is a remnant of Klein Forest, an important 11th century Norman landmark. The Admiral maintained the house to a good standard and again welcomed royalty and politicians to the house. Visitors at the castle included the Prince of Wales, later King Edward VIII, Neville Chamberlain, Stanley Baldwin, Winston Churchill and Adlenia Patti. Even though he spent 35 years in active service in the Royal Navy, his interest in horticulture and the environment was said to be as great as that of his uncle. The Admiral became an expert on rhododendrons, maybe because the soil and situation at Klein favoured these new and exotic plants. Although he made few changes to Klein Castle itself, during the 1920s he commissioned a number of buildings for the gardens. The Admiral enjoyed standing on top of the Admiral's Tower to view his gardens and to look out over Swansea Bay. Mr Eric Thomas lived with his parents in the lodge at Klein, wrote an article for the History of Mumbles website in which he said, You had to salute the Admiral every time you met him and he always saluted you in return. It was quite a problem for the gardeners who might be pushing a barrow when they encountered him. They had to put the wheelbarrow down, salute pick it up again and disappear behind a rhododendron only to meet him again on the other side where the same procedure was repeated. Joy Cottage was built for his three daughters as a playhouse overlooking the lake. 
Both the lake and the Japanese bridge were constructed by in-house staff after research and planning with the help of staff at Kew Gardens. The bridge is a replica of one found in the palace of the Emperor of Japan. The Admiral lived a full life participating in the development of Swansea Town. He was chair of Vivian and Sons amongst other civil appointments and was a founder member and the first president of the Gower Society. He became honorary colonel of the 53rd Welsh Division Training RASC T. He died in 1952, aged 83, at Klein Castle. The estate built up since 1860 had to be sold in order to meet death duties. Klein Chapel was built by William Graham Vivian and was opened for worship in 1908. Beneath it is a private vault. Graham Vivian, his sister Dulcie and the Admiral are buried. Swansea Borough Council bought Klein Castle in 1953 and its surrounding parkland of 76 acres for £17,500. The parkland was opened to the public in April 1954. The parkland is a much-loved asset to the city of Swansea. Every year large crowds come to see the fine trees, bluebells, tree ferns and huge genera and in May for its display of rhododendrons.